being recorded now. And uh, the agenda is being presented on the screen for today. Uh, Lawa, do you want to speak about the agenda? Uh, this is pretty much the agenda that was left after the last meeting. Uh, I put on the uh, use cases one more time and I put the um, uh, action time, action, action item review. And then uh, the discussion that was going on now on indicators and uh, and ancillary data. Uh, I think um, uh, if time allows, we go there, otherwise we take it next time. Sounds good by me. And anyone uh, wants to update the agenda or have something to add to it? Propose to uh, add to, to the agenda? I think everybody's happy with the agenda. Uh, so we could uh, we could do uh, the action item review, and um, you know um, now, or I can give the ball to why uh, why you are immediately uh, go with the order presented. Um, shall we go with the order uh, that you have, uh, Loa? I think so, because this is uh, something we delayed. So I think we should start. Uh, All right. How you... Okay. Uh, why you, uh, uh, can you hear us? Yes, uh, I will take the ball. Yeah. Or you want to share from your side? Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, today uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, MPOS extension header architecture. This is uh, basically a, a draft um, named uh, 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 extension header architecture. It's uh, actually um, um, a company is uh, other two drafts about the uh, uh, extension header indicator and uh, uh, the extension header format. So first, let me uh, uh, recap. Are you, uh, one, yeah. one question when, when, when we're starting. Uh, there yeah. is another one, uh, another draft on... Uh, uh, yeah, or, okay, are, you okay. going to talk, are you going to talk about that one also, or do you want to do that next time? Uh, Basically, uh, that draft is in more detail. This this draft will also cover the, the some basic concept in that draft, but that draft is gives uh, more details in different type of network scenarios. Um, I'm not sure at this point people are, are interested in uh, learning those more details, but uh, uh, from uh, this talk, they will get uh, the, the basic idea. So it, it will be covered in this. Yeah, I agree. But that means yeah. that we also would like to have uh, at least a couple yeah, of people I, I, reviewing the other draft because it's just yeah, because it's de detailed and uh, it's yeah, yeah, it's a lot of details. But I, I, I expect people will uh, understand the 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 basic idea, and uh, if uh, there's more interest in uh, knowing details, and uh, then. Uh, yeah, we, we might uh, uh, talk about it uh, in the future. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, first, let me recap some basic concepts we have so far. Uh, we like to support MPS extension header uh, to support in network services and the functions uh, in MPS networks, and. Uh, uh, the extension headers are, are located between the MPS label stack and the uh, uh, original upper layer payload. And uh, we need some indicators in the label stack to indicate the existence of uh, MPS uh, extension header. Um, but 
but the well, one interesting thing about uh, extension header is that um, we have a new concept of uh, extension header path. Um, it, it's a, uh, this this extension header path or EHP. Um, it's just, just a sub path of an LSP. It means it doesn't uh, necessarily uh, or, or in, uh, fully overlap with an uh, LSP. Uh, it can start uh, uh, and end and, uh, and uh, any node on the LSP. Um, but the one requirement is that both end nodes of uh, EHP must be extension header capable, which means uh, because uh, the 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 uh, the head end need to add the extension header and the uh, tail end need to remove the extension header, and uh, the a specific extension header is only valid is only valid on uh, on a, a particular extension header path associated to it, and there are two types of uh, MPS uh, extension wait, wait, headers. How, how the you? first I type have... is a hop by hop type. And it is supposed to be processed by every node along an e, e extension header pass. Um, and uh, LSR uh, and uh, LSP can be configured to ignore the HBH uh, extension header. Um, there was an interrupt in there, you know? Yes. Uh, no, I had an interrupt. Yeah, no, I was just a question. If I remember correctly, an extension header path is equal to or a subset of the LSP. So it, it could cover the entire LSP. Yeah, it's good uh, cover, yeah. But uh, yeah, it okay. can be uh, just a subpass. Yeah, we yeah. I will show example um, in uh, later slides. Okay. Um, and uh, the, another type of the extension header is a uh, end to end. So in the, uh, or edge to edge, this means it's a uh, will not be processed by the transit LSR, and uh, it's only inserted by the um, head EHP uh, node and removed by the uh, tail EHP node, uh, and only also only processed by the uh, end nodes. So here's some uh, uh, more details. And uh, um, only on the on the path, there will be some uh, extension header capable nodes and uh, incapable nodes. And only the H capable nodes can precise the extension header as configured. Um, so this such capability could be announced through uh, IGP uh, protocol extension. So each node and node is a upstream uh, upstream nodes capability if it can do uh, extension header processing or not. And uh, each non-capable nodes should ignore the extension header and forward the packet as euro. So that's to guarantee uh, so the, the packet with extension mm -hmm. header uh, can be successfully uh, forwarded. Um, one, one or more extension headers could be added by uh, one or more ex, uh, each uh, extension header capable nodes. Um, so, so, but uh, to add a new header, we, we have to ensure that um, the end node, the tail node, uh, uh, and, the, and the downstream can remove it. So, um, otherwise, the extension header cannot be added. And uh, also to optimize the, the operation, uh, we use uh, some FEC uh, um, label to actually indicate um, uh, there there is no extension header in a packet ex explicitly. So with this uh, um, the label, then the the we, we will know the, the node can immediately know that. Uh, there's no extension header, so it doesn't need to scan the label stack or uh, to find it, try to find it. So I will use example to show how it works. So th th this is an um, um, example. Um, 
we have a, a label switch path uh, from node A to G. The, the uppercase node, such as A, D, E, F, G, are uh, extension header capable. But as the lowercase node, like B and C, are uh, extension header incapable. So on this label path, we have uh, um, set up uh, five extension header passes, which means each pass we will add a new extension header to it. So for example, the first pass, EHP1, actually from node A to G, it covers the entire label switch, uh, label switch pass. And we have some other, um, other uh, passes as well. Uh, we can see that some of these uh, EHPs uh, can overlap partially. So, so by uh, allowing this a very uh, flexible um, uh, pass, uh, pass uh, the extension header usage, and we can uh, support uh, various different uh, network in network <laughs> services. Um, so, which also means uh, the extension headers actually can it's possible to be added and removed removed it uh, anywhere in the network. So it's a it's a fairly uh, flexible. So to 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 support the um the the, the each of uh, the forwarding actually um we use um uh, some um uh, uh some 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 um uh, like the DOD and the DU uh, method to distribute the uh, uh, labels. Um. For example, um, in in this case, um, the G uh, will uh, the advertise uh, the label, forwarding label for the label switch pass, um, using the uh, uh, just a uh, just a like the, as show in this uh, figure, um, the the label two o three, two o two, and two o one. Uh, our IPFEC, which means um, it's just a, it's just a normal as no, normal um, labels for forwarding. So it also means um, there's no knowledge about the existence of the FEC. So in this case, any node, any um, extension header capable nodes, mm -hmm. when it see such a label. It will need to check if uh, if there are extension header in the packet or not. Um, if a uh, um, extension header in capable nodes see such a label, it's just a forward as euro. Um, however, there's also other the <coughs> FEC called no extension header present FEC. So once this label is uh, uh, distributed to a uh, uh, each extension uh, extension header capable nodes. Uh, then uh, the 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 node can use this label to tell the downstream no downstream node that there is no extension header in a packet. So the downstream node once receives such a packet with such a label, it will not. Uh, check the extension header and directly forward the packet. So in this case, uh, the performance can be optimized. Can I ask a question here? Yes. So if the extension header is a end-to-end -end header, you know, there is really no need to 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 scan it, right? So I assume this uh, indicator. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, EH present uh, indication you know, is only needed for for uh, hub by hub uh, extension headers. Is that um, true? That's, uh, but uh, I mean, even for even it's a end to end extension header, the internal node is not supposed to uh, process it, but uh, they can still look at it. Uh, so for what, in this for what case, purpose? um, some times just get the information from from it. I 
I am not sure if this uh, um, exactly necessary or not. But the point is, it will be not processed, but uh, it doesn't uh, prevent you from uh, looking at it. Um, so, um, at least, um, so so I think it's a possible uh, still to um, provide it. Or but if we if we if we agree that uh, there's a, also no need to to look at it at all, then um, you, you are right for the uh, edge to edge um, type of extension header. You will uh, you can just um, but semantically um, here we just use that to show no eh present but it doesn't tell no um uh hop uh, by hop or end to end so it, it, we, we don't differentiate that so i think it's um uh it's better uh to um to not differentiate uh, what type of extension header in the in the in the payload uh, in in the packet um a, a, another reason i think is that um we still need to use this fec label uh to tell a node which is uh, actually the tail node of the path it 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 it's indeed a need to process it it's a header even is a um a trash type Okay. Uh, we can, we can oh, oh, I'm just saying I'm, I'm I must say we can defer this. I must okay, yeah, I uh, uh, Sorry. Can I ask a question? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, please. Okay. Uh, you are saying that uh, a label fact will be allocated to indicate uh, eh is present, and not present. Not present. So by default, EH is for every label we allocate is present by default. Um, no, to, by default, it's a label just a uh, uh, tell you nothing about the existence of FEC, which means if a uh, um, EH capable node receive a normal label, so it doesn't know if there's a extension header or not, so it needs to check. But what, if what, it's, what, uh, what tells the node that there is an EH header? What, what is the, the yeah? What, what, how can a node tell that an EH is present? Oh, be, yeah, because uh, if I insert, um, if I receive, uh, for example, there are two cases. If I, uh, I'm a, if this node, um, the header node. Is of course a extension header capable nodes, and if it knows it's a um, uh, it's a it's a it's a it it insert a extension header to it, then it will uh, use a normal um, uh, label IP FEC label to forward it. Otherwise, if uh, it doesn't, uh, if it sees, it, it finds there's no extension header in this packet, it will use a uh, no EH present FEC to forward this packet. So this way, the, the downstream node, once it receives this packet, if it is received this uh, no EH present FEC, then it know immediately that there's no extension header. Otherwise, it, it needs to search. Okay, so what you're saying is that uh, the top label indicates the presence of the EH. Yes. Right. Uh, that means yeah, okay. So the 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 gash way was that there is oh, a. Oh uh, no, no, it's not tell you the presence of EH uh, uh, the EH. It's a basically either tell you I don't know or explicitly tell you there is not. So, so if if you find this, uh, I don't know. Then you need to continue to scan the uh, label stack to try to find the indicator. If there's no indicator, then there's no extension header, for sure. Oh, so 
Uh, okay, that's it. okay. I, I didn't understand it that way. Okay, it's not clear from what. Okay, from how you explained it, I'll read more about it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So 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 um. For for example, in this case, no. If we have a we have a a pass from A to G, right? Then A will add a new extension header to the packet, but uh, it, it will only use a 203, label 203 to forward as top label to forward the packet to B. Then B receive this packet, and because it's incapable, uh, EH incapable, and it just uh, forward the packet to D. Now D receive this packet with the label 202, and uh, I say, okay, I don't know if there's extension header in it or not, so I need to search. And after search, node D find there is an extension header in the packet. So it will use a, a 201, it's the 201 to forward the packet to E. And similarly, E use a, a, a use a FEC uh, PHP uh, forward packet to G. So so then and then the G will uh, terminate the uh, uh, extension header. But if uh, there's no extension uh, header at all, so okay. A still use two three forward to B. B use two two forward to D. Then D will need to check the extension header. Find there's no extension header at all, and it will use a three o one forward to E. Then E know E once it receives the packet C. 301, it knows there's no extension header at all. Then it will directly forward the packet to G. So, so in uh, in this case, you can see um, the, the the no H is present. IPC can help to um, accelerate the, the processing. Hey, uh, yeah. Ho, like uh, uh, the uh, the E node is going to allocate uh, two labels for the same IP. Two zero one and three zero one. Yeah. Okay. This is this is these are FEC labels. Yeah. For the same pass. Yeah. So, do you have any example like uh, uh, where the uh, the extension um, header uh, lies and stuff like that in in the stack? Uh, excuse me. Can you, can you repeat your question? Uh, did you have any slide where actually you can show the uh, uh, where the uh, extension header lies in the uh, uh, MPL um, stack or data? No, no, no. So, sorry, okay. I, 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 yeah, I didn't include such an example in the draft okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, actually, I, I think that another draft in more details gave actually actually gave the uh, some figures. Um, yeah. Yeah. To show the real real example. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, yeah you can maybe you can take a look at that and another draft. Okay, so another thing, um, uh, how, how actually we can correlate that uh, this extension header should be processed um, on uh, B uh, on a D node or E node or G node? Um, that's a, that's a, that's a, is as configured. Um, if, um, if, if the node is on the path, then, uh, and it's a HBH type node, then, uh, then, then that that node if is also EH capable, and it should um, process this extension header. And if it's a uh, um, configured as a uh, end node on the pass, so and uh, this this configuration should bind to a particular extension header. Then the, then that extension header should be removed by that node. So in this case, that's, that's all um, uh, configured uh, through the control channel. Okay, in that case, uh, that, that should be only one extension header in the stack anytime? No, no, uh, this could be multiple uh, extension uh, headers, right? Okay. Uh, so in this example, you can see um, we can have uh, five extension headers, but the first one will be fact from A to G, the second one from A to E, the third one from D to G, 
So it means uh, at node E, the center header two will be removed. And at F, uh, extension header four will be removed. And at node G, all the other three extension header will be removed. Okay, so, so then in that case, like for each and every uh, extension header uh, insert and removal, we need to have a corresponding uh, label to that. Yeah. Uh, so that's how we identify no, 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 and no, 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 that's only, uh, if I understand your question right, where we have only one indicator um, in the label stack to tell there are extension headers. So if there's a more than one, we have only also only one indicator. So in the label stack, we cannot tell uh, uh, how many extension headers we have. We just okay. know there, there is. You need to go to the extension header part, then go through the chain of the extension headers to find the uh, to to find the one you need to uh, the node need to process. Okay, so if if you can send that uh, the description of the extension header, I can take a look. Okay, and see. Yeah, thanks, man. How you you say that you can insert action, extension header anywhere? How do you decide where to insert the header? So this For one, example, one. if you receive a packet on D and you choose to insert new extension header, will it be push on the top of the stack or somewhere in the middle? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a from D to G could be another extension header pass. Um, for example, for some uh, application uh, such as IOAM, and uh, uh, I'd like to monitor uh, the uh, to collect the telemetry data from node D to G. Then uh, we can just add the IOM header uh, at node D and request the G to remove it. So, uh, but but this is just a part of the entire label switch pass. It doesn't need to overlap with it completely. Um, so 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 yeah. So 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 in this case, you can see uh, at node D, there are already two other uh, extension headers in the package. Um, but this is third one. Um, uh, also, also, um, if we have multiple extension headers, we organize this in this way: the all the HBH type are uh, kept in front of the E to E type. So, so this can also help us to um, improve the performance a little bit because uh, uh, H HBH are supposed to be processed by every node and. Uh, um, e to E is only for the uh, edge nodes, and also um, a, a, another reason is that uh, um, by put the HBH earlier, uh, it so has a higher um, um, possibility to be uh, uh, in, still in the within the uh, reach of the uh, chip processing capability. Um, so, so this can be processed. Um, if it's a, a beyond the header buffer window, then the node cannot be processed. But in that case, it's um, um, it's a uh, um, I, 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 the, the the default um behavior is should still uh, forward the packet uh, without uh, dropping it. Um. I have uh, actually that explained quite a lot. Thank you for that. Uh, one more clarification question. Um, do you assume that all the nodes can process all the extension headers? No, uh, I mean, even as a extension header capable nodes, it can uh, be configured to support some extension header or uh, not to no support some others. And it, even it can support some extension header, you can also configure it uh, to to not process it, because this is a uh, for some um, uh, at least the for uh, one reason for that is uh, for the performance reason. If if um, 
uh, processing such header uh, can overload uh, this uh, current node or, or uh, causing other performance issues, then the node can choose to be configured to ignore this extended header. So uh, I think this can all, all be uh, configured uh, or or it can um, can uh, determine this in real time depending on the um, current uh, traffic um, um, tra uh, traffic load. Uh, for, for for example, if uh, uh, for the uh, again for the IOAM case, uh, so <laughs> that is quite a lot of processing, and uh, if uh, actually doing the processing. Um, Cause a packet drop or a, a slow down the forwarding, then uh, then the node might choose to note process it. Um, I, I think that's a, a should be supported. Hey, well, well, you I have two questions on this slide before you move on. Yes. Um, the first is how do you indicate to a node, let's say uh, D. Uh, that it should process, or maybe D is not uh, process uh, EH one, but not EH two. So, so basically, so, so, selective okay. process okay. Okay. EH. Yeah, basically. That's number one. That's question this, number one. Question number okay. two. I'll I'll tell you the questions, and you know, you feel free to answer them. The, the second is, you know, how do you instruct E, for example, to pop only EH two? And leave EH one. EH one. It is the it's the endpoint of EH two, but mm. looks like it removes EH two and keeps EH one. These are the two questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think these two questions are are related. with so all about uh, uh, how we uh, configure the uh, extension header pass. Um, for the node D, since it's uh, actually it's belong to both. Uh, uh, EHP one and EHP EHP two, so uh, by default it's supposed to uh, process both extension headers, but uh, it it's a uh, can be configured to ignore um, either of that. Yeah, or, configuration. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, also configuration. Yeah, you can say okay, uh, either you are supposed to process. You are actually you can process these two two extension headers, but uh, one of them, you, you just to tell you don't 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 uh, do it. You can uh, configuration. If you think of it, is you have to go and touch the nodes, and it's it's a dynamic thing. It's happening yeah. in real time, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and re related to that, it's not only process, and also the question about removal, where whether yeah. you should remove the head or not, header or not. So, but the removal is a is a mandatory if it's a end. Uh, it's a end node of the pass. It has wow. to remove the remove What's the extent header. For example, node E must remove the uh, extend, extension header too. How do you know it's yeah. uh, it's the end? Yes. Uh, that, that's uh, that's also the um, uh, that can could be done through other um, protocols, but uh, or through the control configuration. Uh, as I said earlier, when you insert a uh, 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 extension header to the packet, you must know there is a, a downstream node as a, a pass end to uh, uh, to to be able to remove it. Otherwise, you cannot insert it at all because that could cause a um, problem. Uh, yeah, it's not clear uh, why you because the LSP in your figure here is from A to G. Yeah. Uh, when you said the path is ending, I got confused. What do you mean by path? Oh, I, I, I mean the path is an extension header path. So, um, so so only you can set up an extension header path. Then you can insert the the extension header to to this path. Uh, so so which means you, in this figure you can see for every extension header it has a it has a path. Um. Uh, start from node and and some and and some other node on this uh, label switch pass, so which means and the end of uh, extension header pass, uh, you have to remove that uh, particular extension header. 
yeah that is the confusion even i have you know like uh, how the stack look like on when ye send the packet out so that will explain you no know, like um, what all information you have and then uh, where actually uh, it will be removing those uh, ehp headers oh ehp is not a header ehp is here is instead oh, i mean the uh, the data the the, uh, the additional yeah. uh, extension data you said you're going to remove uh, if if you have a ehp2 then actually he is going to remove it right so if you can give an example of the label stack what actually a is producing oh, okay and then how how actually in each node it's getting uh, removed that will yeah. make things more clear yes okay okay i i, I but unfortunately i don't have enough but just uh, let's try to uh, explain it from, from node a you, you you can see in this figure we will have a two extension header inserted to the packet right then then we also need to uh, insert um, uh, an indicator, uh, extension header indicator in the label stack somewhere. Um, then we we just forward this uh, uh, this packet. Um, so so B and C are both um, both are uh, EH incapable. So it will not try. Uh, it just do the normal forwarding. Right, the packet will reach the node D. Then D will check, uh, D will is a EH capable. It will check check the label stack. It will find the indicator, find the indi uh, extension header indicator to tell, okay, there are some uh, extension header in this packet you, you need to look at. The node D will then, will then uh, search through the uh, extension headers um, uh, list will find uh, these two extension headers. And then based on the configuration in this node, it will choose to process them, uh, one or two of them. Uh, or or, um, or, or uh, it, it can also be configured to do nothing about them. Then the, the packet will be forwarded to node E. E is also extension header capable. Then it also exam examine the label stack to find the indicator. And based on that, it will continue to search and find the two extension headers. And now E is uh, configured as a parse EHP parse uh, tail node for the EHP2. Then it will definitely need to remove the second extension header. And it also decides to process the first header or not. Then the packet will be forwarded to F and then to G, and to node G, the first extension header will be uh, removed again. So, so here I only talk about the uh, first and the second extension header. Then there are also some other three uh, extension headers, but they follow the similar uh, processing uh, procedure. Hello, can I ask a question here? Yes. So for uh, ESP3, um, do you need to put a without header at A? Without to extension at A. Put, uh, put what header? Uh, the one, uh, the, the label say no extension header. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. If, uh, if, if, uh, we have only extension header uh, plus three, right? Then, then uh, a a there's no extension header, right? A a can a can put a, a no extension header um, fec in it to forward the packet to D. So, so so D D will receive this and D D know there's no extension header. But once D inverted the new extension header to the packet, it will use a the other, um, uh, no, the normal IPFEC IP, IP, label. Okay, thank you. So the thing that, I mean, I know I helped write this some years ago and all that, but the thing that worries me with all these things is, do we really want to be pulling packets apart and inserting stuff in them? Or should we just be, have some universal marker that allows you to, um, uh, to say, do not process on the path 
I mean, it's a big deal pulling all this information off the front of the packet. Uh, pulling up, you, you mean the pulling out some uh, information means that you well, are... You, 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 no, no, you'd have, in order to insert a header, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've got to strip the entire label stack and you've got to strip all the headers in front of it and then push it. And I'm just worried about whether that's a realistic uh, thing to do. A, it's a, actually uh, in the packet processing this procedure is called uh, sometimes it's called deparsing. How you assembly the uh, out, uh, output packet after the processing. Um, in that sense, actually, the the packet already be um, uh, uh, be separated into a different parts. You just need to. Um, reorganize them to form the new uh, packet. All right. So, so you are so, assuming a particleized forwarder, which is a big assumption um, about the forwarders. Now, and, and if it was as easy as this, why did anyone ever complain about the number of SR labels that we wanted to push on packets? The number of SR labels. That's a. That's a. Uh, I think. Uh, for uh, for MPSSR you are mentioning, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For MPSSR, there's a big issue with the number of labels you can push, and here we are talking about pu pulling potentially you know, very large numbers of labels off, and potentially arbitrary length. Um, uh, uh, Stuart, yeah, I'm just worried about rebuilding these. Whether we can do this? Wait, wait, wait a bit. What you do is you put one indicator in the label stack. That's the only time you attach a stack. The extension header goes as uh, ancillary data after the boss. Right, right, right. So, and I, I, so but people would, but, but I thought I just heard that we were going to proposing inserting information in the stack. No, or, no. Or inserting no. information after the stack. After the stack. Yes. In the middle of the LSP, to insert information after the stack, requires either a lot of work or one very particular processing model that I am not sure is widely supported. So just be careful um, about this. Yeah, I, I agree with Stuart. Yeah, there's a uh, imposition limit and a scan limit of number of labels. And... Well, and also not all forwarders, I think, can do particleized forwarding, which results in an insert in the header, can they? In in um, you 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 are saying inserting uh, um, new headers in the uh, network is expensive. Yes, and I'm but, not sure. And I'm not sure is universally supported by a long, long way. Um, it's a uh, actually I I believe it's a it's a <laughs> you, um, to 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 my knowledge I I think it's a actually not that hard to do it's actually easy to do uh in many uh in, uh, in the hardware uh, switches and also in software um well, you, you, one, you 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 because uh yes it's a need um for for for, for example in the uh in the existing uh, in the IOM uh trace mode we already know that that's a possible to keep adding data to right. the, so could, to the nodes that will expand the size of the, the header. That's right. that's the so, equivalent so, to it, it, insert some data in the network. Right. Well, hang on uh, a second. First off, I am not sure how widely insert IOAM is projected for deployment. I'm not sure how many people can deploy it today. But we're talking about largely universal or quasi universal services here. So I wonder if the people who with knowledge detailed knowledge of the vendor implementations could um, um, so, put in an opinion as to whether um, uh, insertion no, 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 no. is plausible. Let, let me state in this way. No, 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 no. I'd like um, to hear. Okay. Whoa, whoa, okay. whoa. Let's hear from the vendors whether they can support this characteristic. Okay. Let's not use that example. Just say, okay. Well, you used it. For all the, uh, for example, for the SRV6, it's inserted. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, um, Inserted in network, 
right. well that's not and, that's, uh, a, that's not signed off yet as and, far as I know. Uh, and uh, for MPOS, you will need to um, push labels to the to the um to the to the to the packet. It's also add the new headers. It's equivalent no, to that's add, not the add. same. That's not the same. Insert is not the same as push, and you know that. So now, you the question so, I've got. Well, 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 well. Before we uh, carry on, could we hear from some? Uh, I'm I'm neutral these days, by the way. I don't work for Huawei anymore. Uh, could we hear from some non-Huawei people whether they can support this feature? Of course, if he, uh, yeah. Not you, why you, why not you, you how you. I'd like to hear from others on the call yeah, whether they I, believe they can support this feature. I will leave it open to the vendors on the call now, but I think it's fair also to take an action item and ask the vendors, uh, you know, uh, feedback on such an insertion in uh, uh, transit LSR. Um, and, and, and I can take an action item. If anyone on, of the vendors wants to uh, give their opinion now, uh, please go ahead. Uh, I, I, I know why, uh, why you use opinion, or we know why you use opinion, but if anyone uh, other than uh, Huawei can, wants to uh, comment, go ahead from the vendors. Okay, I, I can, like I promised, I'll take an action item and, you know, uh, we'll ask the vendors to please, uh, you know. Tarek? Tarek? Yes, John. Uh, I think we also, I mean, there's the data plane capabilities, but there's also the control plane capabilities to set all the stuff up. I mean, I think the overhead of setting this stuff up is going to be substantial. Indeed. I mean, it's substantial. But, but, but John, we could in principle... I mean, it may be hard, but that's simply a matter of software, if you excuse the term. No, if I'm talking data... about performance. I'm talking oh, yeah, about... yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, if the data plane can't do it at performance, then we should stop talking about it. No, no, no. But the control plane performance of setting of all this messaging to set this stuff up is going to be uh, extensive. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, 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 so far, we only talk about the data plane processing. Uh, of course, it will involve, also involve a lot of our control plane, but it's, uh, uh, it's not covered yet and definitely need future work. And also in this, uh, uh, just for the purpose of uh, uh, demonstration, we actually show a fairly complex example, but we don't expect actually in uh, re reality, we will uh, ever need to handle such a complex uh, uh, cases. So, 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 so in, in, because uh, we, we all know there, there are costs associated with um, extent header processing. So in, in reality, we may uh, want to actually limit the, the num both the number and uh, also the, uh, the pass uh, uh, construct for for the extension headers. So 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 here we just uh, see okay zero uh, zero radically we can uh, support some such kind of flexibility. Stuart, yep, uh, uh, Ian here. Um, okay. uh, for clarity, w when you say vendor, what do you mean? Do you mean well, a ASIC design team, or do you mean a box producer? Who may or may not design their own ASIC or a box producer who uses merchant silicon? I'm trying to understand how feasible this is. All right. Yeah. And um, uh, so my, my question really was an abbreviation for of, of the question to the vendors. Yeah. Um, if we were to standardize this facility, which would be useful for all sorts of things, this insertion thing, yeah. would this be supported across all LSRs? or some class of LSRs, or not really be feasible at all? Okay. Um, I, I certainly uh, think I can say with some uh, caution around taking me at face value, because it's been a while since I've been poking around in the detailed implementation of the data path, that this would be uh, at best frustrating to implement and at worst not possible on certain platforms. 
Uh, I, I did look down through the list of people whose names I recognize and don't see people, for example, from Broadcom or even people from some of the vendors who have their own ASIC development. So I do think that the question needs to be put more broadly than mm, this crew. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I am yeah. really worried about concepts oh, and I, insertion. I, I have been bothered by this since it started. One of the virtues and one of the reasons why I reached out to you about the indexing a proposal is I thought that that might mitigate it, not not mitigate the insertion problem, but mitigate some of the computational efficiency problems that are always uh, the upper bound of what you can do in the data path. And I'd rather spend those cycles doing other things if possible. So I think we probably largely agree, uh, and um, the idea of sort of short circuiting a header seems to mm -hmm. my my a pointer or some offset this calculation seems much better than physically removing it. And I'm kind of of the view that if you didn't have the foresight to put the put padding space in the header when the, the packet originally started, then it's too bad it can't go in there. I, I generally agree. I think there might be some exceptions to that. Uh, in in very particular circumstances, but in, in, in very indeed. broad strokes, I agree with you. Yes, sure. well, I think we're probably aligned. Yeah, John. Well, there is another issue, which is that A may not know about the existence of EHP three or EHP four or EHP five, so it can't preallocate for them. So it would kind of have to push its own stack. Up. Well, so you could argue that, that 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 maybe the right thing to do is to build your own stack, if that's the case. So I'm, I'm, to terminate the stack, I am so, so rebuild it. So that's the same thing. You 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 just saying you if you don't put new data, uh, to the head of the packet. If you insert it somewhere in the middle, then that's a, you you have concern on the performance. So you know, put, Stuart was saying that you might that uh, a might have to preallocate for all of these EHPs, and my point was. It may not know about them. Right, and and my point was maybe the right thing to do is to get the packet, uh, scrub the overlap, get the packet to to um, to D, and um, then get it to, you know, and then strip the headers off and start again. So make D a gateway that. Uh, um, well, then F's going to have to do the same thing. Uh, indeed. So I, I I think that that we really need to be really careful as to what it is we want to do and whether there are simpler ways of doing it. And I don't think we can assume that a well we will find out from other people right, but I I don't think our any assumption that you can insert data on the fly. Uh, it's going to carry across the uh, the overwhelming number of platforms. But I may be wrong. We're prepared to be proved wrong. Uh, we do need to know from the manufacturers whether it's feasible in any reasonable time to be doing insertion. Stuff. So are you saying it might be better if we just do everything at A? Uh, I'll either push everything at A. Yes. Or um, uh, push the packet, get the packet to D, and then rebuild the stack at D. Uh, Make but, D a uh, gateway. You know, as uh, long as you will do this in network, it doesn't matter where you do it. It's the same. It's the same uh, processing, right? No, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Push splitting a packet apart is not the same as dumping everything that's on the front. We do that all the time, and pushing stuff on the front, which we do all the time. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So you, when you say all the thing, include the label stack, right? Terminating yeah. the label stack. Yeah, oh, yeah I was yeah. assuming you would terminate so, so the label stack. So here, the structure is, the pack structure is a label stack plus a list of extension headers plus the original payload. So you are saying at node A or uh, some some particular node, you will remove all the label stack and remove uh, and uh, add the extension header and then put the label stack back. No, so that's, put the label that's stack, exactly put, same process. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. Put the label Wait, stack that you it, need to reach determination on there. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Did you have something? To say? I would think at A you 
so at the uh, LSP head and you add all the extension headers. Yes. Even for ESP3, you add A, but you indicate it started processing like um starting from D, right? So D knows it start need to be processed. Before D, there are any capable node, they, they just ignore it. So, so the, there are two solutions, I think. Let's just take, um, uh, you, you can either get the packet to D and then strip anything else off and recreate the packet, make D a, a, a gateway, make it a, a switching uh, node. Or you can get the packet to D, push, for example, EHP3 on the front plus the LSP, and then set G up so that it knows how to first remove EHP3 and then remove EHP1. I think probably what we need to do is to, this is really going back to the requirements, isn't it? This is going back to the, we should figure out what it is we really want to do. No, no, let's start. Yeah. ESP1, ESP3, uh, they don't go together. ESP1 means there is a, like a, the, the ESP, uh, the extension header is head to the end. And uh, ESP3 means you only have it part of the LSP. Right. So what you could do is you could push EHP1, push the label stack to D. At D, you can pop the label delivering you to D push EHP3, and then push the label to G. Hmm. Right. That, that doesn't require new things from, uh, from LSRs. Inserting EHP3 on the fly does require something new, and I just wanted to verify that it was feasible. Are, are we really talking about uh, uh, inserting, uh, no, I mean, uh, putting an EHP3 at A or just leave space for EHP3, but still let D to do put in the EHP3. I, I, I'm, cap I, I'm, I'm cool with either of those approaches. What I, what I am concerned about is the, the feasibility of adding information below the label stack uh, midway along the, um, the path. So Stuart, as you just uh, described, when we, the, the, the so-called insertion is just like you pop something, you put it in the right location, then you push back the what you popped, then that's insertion, right? Well, but, 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 but can they actually do it is the question. It's a huge amount of data relative to what they normally deal with. What, what's the, I, I, I don't just want to know, okay, let, let's uh, find some, yeah, as you said, find some, uh, vendors or some other experts uh, hardware to um talk about that so right. even with your even within your own company you need to be sure that all platforms that might want to do this have that capability it's all very well thinking that some platforms for some specialist applications have got it that's fine so long as this is only deployed in places where those platforms are the only platforms um, um, deployed um, it's much, much bigger to uh, add a general capability to MPLS because that requires that it's feasible on all likely types of implementation that you will meet. And I just want to make sure that we know what we're doing. We really need to talk to what I've been loosely calling the vendors, but we do need to talk to to, to people to, to understand that they're happy with that. Otherwise, we'll come up with a solution, right? And we'll put it in the in the um, in the uh, to the working group, and it'll probably fester on for a while, and then someone in the vendors will notice, and then we'll have a big fight. So why don't we find out to start with whether this is feasible? Um, whether it's a significant increase in the design to do it, and whether the value of doing it, is, it justifies that increase. Fair enough. I think uh, that's an action item I took already, uh, Stewart. Thank and you. I ask the attendees, you know, to to update that action item. Uh, uh, while while I'm talking, I want to ask Ian. Uh, I didn't catch. Uh, for what vendor you were speaking uh, on behalf. Can can someone enlighten me on if he's uh, 
Did you mention what, what, what vendor you gave your opinion on? Okay. Ian, maybe it's the way. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll leave it uh, as Duncan Ian then. Uh, um, okay. Do you still have material while you or you're open for questions generally? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm almost done. So, uh, obviously, uh, this is just some uh, uh, very uh, initial work and there's an uh, incomplete. And uh, in this draft, they also uh, leave many uh, empty chapters trying to cover uh, different uh, other uh, scenarios like uh, RSVPT, tunnels, VPN, and PS uh, uh, segment routing. And also, uh, um, as I mentioned, there's uh, no um, uh, too much uh, about the uh, control plane is covered. So this uh, all uh, to, to be done, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah basically okay. that's, uh, that's all I have right now. And uh, the other questions are welcome. Yeah, ideally we, we can get back to the uh, feasibility before we go and throw control plane extensions, agreed. Um, I have a, a doubt, you know, on your figure there where you have nested uh, EHP uh, or multiple EHPs. Can you go back to slide four, please? Okay. This one? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in here, I think maybe it was mentioned also to give the credit. Um, a could have inserted EHP1, EHP2, EHP3, and EHP4 and 5 all at A. But somehow we magically indicate that D is supposed to uh, process EHP1 and EHP2. And, uh, you know, and E is supposed to process uh, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Uh, and then avoid this insertion in the middle, right? Um, you can do that, but this has some uh, issues. Um, you know, first, uh, of all is a overhead, right? If you, if you, for example, in another example, if I just uh, have a very long pass, but uh, between every two pair of nodes, I needed to uh, add an extension, uh, a, a extension header. Then if you put all the extension header up front from the beginning, then you will end up with a extremely um, large packet or the have an overhead too big, but uh, Actually, in one node, only you only need to process one, so that's a very inefficient, or it also may cause a, a MTU uh, problem, right? So, uh -huh. so um, in, in that sense, uh, at least uh, uh, for the for the overhead concerns, that's a not a, I, I don't think that's a you know ideal solution, and okay. and second is. Uh, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, um, make a, if you, you you stack uh, too many uh, extension headers together, then it increases your search cost, right? Because uh, you will just do one uh, in each node, but you, you need to find which one. And there's um, other costs about it. The third is that if, if uh, the overhead is too big, then we, we all know uh, that for most chips, there's a concept of a, a header buffer window. Um, if some extent header uh, is just uh, because uh, uh, some earlier header too big, then push those uh, other headers out of the window. Then you cannot see it and you cannot process it. So, so in this case, uh, it's useless to put extension header there. Um, so, so for, I think for these reasons, uh, I don't prefer to, you know, to put all these extension headers up front. A minor detail here is that I think it, whether you put it, uh, uh, all the headers there or just, uh, uh, leave the space there. Leave that, that's, a uh, also impossible because, uh, each extension header is, a uh, has a different size and we don't know what header we will use. So I don't think we can leave uh, space uh, because we don't know the right space required. 
Well, maybe you could provision for it. I mean, presumably the network operator is expecting these things to get um, to get added. So it's not infeasible to do that in a well-defined network. Well, for example, some extension header maybe just need a, um, a few uh, words, right? But some may need uh, tens of uh, words. So the um, question is, so, do you know that, does the how, operator know this before so, they do so, it? Yeah, so so first thing, it's how can you... This, can, this won't be very dynamic. Uh, like I liked his example he gave, we want to do telemetry from node D to F, and that could be on demand because your network is con constrained or there are some errors only on that segment. So you want to perform those operations dynamically, not pre program those headers up front. You could do that, Kieran, by, by, it all depends on whether you also have to do the operation at E or not. If, if, if you want to do uh, just path segment monitoring, which we just, which we thought about quite a lot in the MPLS TP days, then you would normally push a whole new front on the packet. So you, you you could it, it you could you could do it by instrumenting between D and F um, over a tunnel uh, D E F. Okay, then we have to understand the trade offs, right? Trade offs of tunnel indeed, between indeed, D and indeed. F versus providing this extension header capability. It, it, exactly, uh, and uh, that's why I want to understand what is actually feasible in the um, medium future uh, in the um, in the LSRs. I mean, I, I'm not against new LSRs doing this, but the value of doing it has to be sufficient that people would deploy the um, the uh, the solution and be prepared to live with nodes that couldn't do it. But we, we just need to, to ground ourselves with this. Yeah, I think I uh, I posted in the chat also, it might be interesting to see how this solution can be made constrained just with push and pop operations rather than talking about insert remove. I, I agree with you. Yeah, so no, so no, no, no matter what, I, I, I think here the key is to uh, maintain the such kind of uh, flexibility. Right, we, we we don't want to uh, restrain the actual the, the flexibility uh, because uh, first we have seen uh, quite a few are uh, existing uh, in network services um, which might require such a flexibility and also uh, we don't want to uh, close the door for for the future development. Um, so that's that's why uh, whatever uh, scheme we adopt, we uh, should uh, support uh, the, the, this kind of uh, flexibility. Um, but that's uh, of course just consider also consider the feasibility uh, in real uh, design development. One thing. Okay worth considering is that sometimes when you need to do add add a header insert a header in the middle of something it's possible that it that node is doing something special and and, and that special node is has some uh, extra i mean it's it's maybe it's able to do something more complicated than inserting a header Maybe I don't know if it's acceptable to say that okay, this kind of operation is only in theory it can be done by any node, but in reality, only certain kind of gateways will will be performing this kind of insertion. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's a kind of a, a capability, right? For some node is a capable of doing that some is not so of course you have to um consider take this in into consideration um yeah for for, for i think that's that's a uh just a should be advertised as a um, node capability and uh, you can only set up your extension header pass um according to uh, that capability uh, announcement 
Another perspective on this, though, is that we have lived for nearly 40 years, I suppose, without needing to do this in the data plane. And if we do introduce in this, this into the data plane, we have made a major change to our concept of layers. And so long as we're prepared to sign that, as long as the IETF as, as a whole is prepared to sign that off, then um, great. But we have lived for a long time without needing to do this, simply by thinking a bit harder about other alternative proposals. Yes, um, even oh. for SRV6 uh, extended header is uh, supposed to only be added by the end nodes, the host, right? But uh, um, I think here uh, we are talking about uh, some brand new uh, in-network services. It's a uh, different. It does require the service to be initiated within the network. So, which means that uh, some nodes in the network has to do the work. It's not nodes just a host can do the work. It's uh, actually some routers uh, switches in networks do the work. Right. So, so, that's, so that's a new requirement, and I think we need to uh, copy that. No, no, no. We need to validate that requirement first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I already uh, showed a bunch of uh, um, use cases, uh, but briefly, I, mean, I can talk more about that. But uh, um, all for all those services that require such capability. Well, we, we do need to understand whether um, those services. We, are... we we don't want network to support those, and uh, we. Well, I mean, so 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 it's all a question of whether people have got money that they're prepared to put on the table to cause the vendors to do this. And remember that every millimeter, square millimeter of silicon you take for this is a square millimeter of silicon that could be used for something else, like increasing the speed or increasing the number of ports or some other function. So we do need to know whether these are services that customers are prepared to put their hand in their pocket and pay for. Feasibility is one thing, but well, uh, when, yeah. when you mention when you mentioned the layer or, or, or violation, uh, I don't think we touched upon that, did we? I don't think that's layer a violation at all because uh, all this belong to layer three. So, no, uh, they belong to different sub layers within layer three. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can see you can see the sub layer, but it's all layer three network layer functions. If you take the example of IP and IP tunnel, uh, you can always encapsulate another IP header and have its own extended headers in it, and then it terminates at a certain point and then resume the original IP. Uh, in here, I don't think I see the delineation of nested LSPs, um, you know, the similar, like you, you, you talk about EHPs as, as if it is an LSP, uh, but I only see a flat LSP. I don't see nesting of LSPs. So if you had if you had LSP one, LSP two, LSP three, and then you are nesting them somehow, I would have understood. But you show one LSP, which is flat, but you have uh, nested paths, uh, which is confusing. Like in IP world, you would do encapsulation of the IP packet. I think that uh, may be related to the layering concept. But this yeah. is not a, a, a the, the layer of a, a, a nesting of the LSP. It's really just uh, the where some extension headers are, are applicable. For example, well, he, it's he's just the same that. LSP, but here between D and F, you have another. Yeah, you have I, I asked header. Jeffrey about that. If we can do an indication kind of thing that this extended header is applicable to this node, uh, but I don't think he's doing this. Uh, there, like there is no indication. Is there? There's no, um, yeah, there's no indication uh, in the packet. That's, uh, so that's down through a node, a node will have to process all EHPs. If, if there are EHPs, you cannot se selectively process a specific EHP. But it's a, it's a, this is configured. You can see all the uh, oh, extension headers, but you can select I don't think to, to process well, some of them. Um, well, you've either got to, to to indicate that in the LSP, 
or you have to indicate it um, by some other means in the packet. And that, that's one of the reasons why we liked the sort of the pointer arrangement. It kind of right. made it clear which ones you actually did. In the flat arrangement, the only thing you can do is to be selective as a result of the characteristic of the LSP or do all of them as was suggested. Right. Depending on the uh, relying on configuration, I don't think it's going to work out operationally. It's going to be very cumbersome. I agree. Okay. Uh, any other questions to Hoi Yu on this? I have one thought, and I haven't read up on it, so it's a, it's a real question. Um, IPv6 has extension headers. Aren't they doing this type of processing? Yeah, but it's kind of a bit of a mess, really. You kind of have to figure out for yourself on 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 the path um, what um, your uh, which which headers um, you want to process. And remember, there's a big big argument going on in uh, in six man about whether you can add anything in the path. Okay, so they're having the same discussion as we had had here. Uh, well, I mean, they they. Maybe someone who knows a bit more about the current state of SR can can tell me, but I thought that, that that there was a bit of an impasse going on over there, and SR would like to be able to do in network insertion, and uh, six man are saying no, you can't. Architectural violation. That's true. Um, I, I don't think this um let's just uh, violate the existing RFC, right? Because uh, but the I don't think that can be called the architectural violation. If uh, so change, that is an architect, uh, it's an architectural it's violation. If you if you if you um, do something that's contra to the definitive um, design of uh, the protocol. Well, actually, my point was uh, that we probably need to check with the six man or someone else. Uh, what they're doing, and it would be bad if we said no, we can't do this, and then six man go ahead and does it. Well, uh, sort of. I mean, you, mm. you, remember, um, you th there will be a certain class of hardware that could do it, and we just need to be careful that we also are prepared for there only to be certain classes of hardware that could do it over here if we do sign it off. Yeah. Just to add on this discussion, I think there is no problem if you encapsulate uh, with a new header. Uh, no. Uh, no, no problem at all there. Uh, I think inserting on the same IP header is the issue. Uh, but, uh, indeed, indeed, indeed. And I, I agree. And it's the same here. I, I have no objection if someone wants to push, uh, essentially create a new stack. And then um, with it, with all its with all its ancillary data, and then pop that off, um, and then continue as you were before. I mean that's just normal tunneling. So I have no problem with that. Right. It's it's this other operation that's a new operation that gives me some concern. I I don't think that tunnel is a solution because uh, many of the service um, are just exactly applied to the original packet. If you apply tunnel to it, you basically change the uh, behavior. That's uh, that's not acceptable. For example, the, again, the, the IOAM is used to just to measure the performance of the um, the, the 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 normal user traffic. You you have to apply it to the to the packet as is. And uh, you, 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 you cannot put it into another channel that will change everything. And so also, does anyone Also, there know? are other use cases like uh, uh, RFC, uh, like uh, um, uh, SFC, so it's from chaining. It's just does to use anyone... the existing label uh, to, to indicate the, um, you know, the, 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 the function chain. But uh, you put all the other uh, the the uh, the pass indicator and uh, index and other metadata in the extension header, 
So that's again is you can know the just do do this by applying another a tunnel header to it. That's um, impossible. And we ha I have other examples. If we if we examine through the existing use cases, we'll find this, that's not possible. Uh, just to uh, try to use uh, another tunnel header to. Okay. What, what are you all uh, go ahead, Stuart. Um, uh, no, I, I mean, I would just want to know how valid these use cases are. I just want to know, for example, for example, we say a lot about IOEM. I'd like to know how widely we expect that to be deployed and how much of a, a reasonable um, um, uh, case it, it, um, it is. Um, so I just want to know. I mean, it's it's already well citing use cases, but they don't they aren't use cases that have IETF consensus yet, and so um, we need to be careful when we just you know, because someone has, has has imagined a use case. We need to uh, be careful how we temper that against what really needs to be um, I, IETF consensus for a significant change to this major protocol. And I think maybe that's a good reason for um, starting writing a use case document and um, see how how much consensus that gets uh, amongst the, um, the the IETF, both in the MPLS group and in some of the other groups that um, you know that the management group, uh, the people who need to manage it, the people who need to build the routing protocols, etc. Do you think we need to see? how likely it is that this is to be would be deployed agreed yeah there is an action item on us to uh, start a use case uh, wiki page and uh, i have uh, updated that action item yes i can give you an update on that and you know while we're at it uh, we can ask the whole attendees and i will send an email to the working group to mm. contribute to the use case as uh, yeah. I mean, I know, I know. Wiki, we agree to wiki. I, I, I am worried that actually, we perhaps really need to get this, you know, close to an RFC before. I and mean, I'm not doing this saying this to delay it, but these are major, major things we want to do. We do need to have some feeling as to whether it's real. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, I couldn't get to the mute button in time. Um, so yeah, we, we we do need to do something or other to test this before we do major, major things. Um, because it's not fair to, well, I, I, mean, I suppose actually vendors wouldn't put all the development cost in uh, to respin silicon unless they thought they were going to make money out of it. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's a fair ask, uh, Stuart, for a document to progress uh, and uh, to give, you know, get blessings on that document uh, before we progress on this protocol uh, change. Um, or at least before we commit uh, large resources to the protocol change. Yes. So, Tariq and Stuart, I have like a half a page structure on how to go about the use cases. So, when you have a chance, I'll, I would like to share and get some feedback on sure, it. Sure, 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 sure. Yes. Yeah, that's great, actually, Kiran. And and I, I, we do have two more minutes. Uh, that's the, what the clock is telling me. And I'll grab the ball back and uh, go back to the agenda. Uh, unless. Uh, you know, any uh, lower you want to preempt that. Uh, oh, go ahead. It's fine. Yeah, I, I think you had a use case uh, discussion. Uh, we did definitely have some good discussion here, but I just wanted to point out that we have added this wiki and uh, it has minimal, uh, minimal set of use cases that we need to expand on. Um, we've talked about most of them. Uh, in C2AM, uh, took a big bulk of the discussion. Network slicing is uh, is another use case that we want to cover, and time sensitive networking. Uh, 
we talked about it um, inserting a deadline timestamp that a, a transit router can inspect and schedule the packet uh, accordingly. Um, you know that that the deadline timestamp. Boy, does it go inside the NPLS header or after the bottom of stack? That's a discussion we should have. And lastly, our network programming was an item that uh, you know I did not uh, have much to elaborate on. There's there's a lot we can do, but uh, we wanted to see what use cases we want to address in MPLS. Um, Kiran, the document that you have is in the spirit of this, right? right? Use case. Yeah, it's somewhat, but I have, uh, it's a very small one. So let me quickly share it in one minute. Okay. And, you know, yeah, maybe you can add a pointer on that uh, wiki so that we can. Yeah, I just wanted to get some feedback. Can you guys see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay. You can so... see it, but can you make it larger? I... I don't know how to make it larger. There is a 15, yeah, uh, maybe you need to select everything. Okay. Is it getting better? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's better. Much better. Yeah, so instead of looking into specific use cases like TSN, all, TSN and other things, I think those have already been done. And I wanted to categorize use cases in the sense they are relevant to MPLS. And obviously, my personal interest is in network slices. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is, can we do use cases in some kind of buckets or categories that things that sit on the data path? And then something we will have to do from the traffic engineering perspective and the things that are um, controlled through the operator. And this is where some kind of service control or the monitoring functions will come in. So I don't know how network programming will fit in here. But something like uh, I actually took most of these bullet points from uh, that special label draft from Kiriti. And a few things which were not clear to me were about the entropy and flow ID. So if we talk about, for example, entropy here, can we do it better or what are the uh, drawbacks with the current, uh, current solutions so that we need to do something differently? So. Uh, but this is the high level structure. For example, we did talk about the slice identifier and where should we put it and uh, the corresponding SLO identifier. And these things are discussed in the document. On top of that, how can we use the new model to provide security and reliability for network slices? we can develop a use case around that as well, because these things were extensively discussed in a network slicing framework and definitions context. And then from the traffic engineering perspective, it is also possible that for a given slice, you may, uh, two flows within a slice may have slightly different requirements. That is also something we have discussed. And uh, so it will require traffic engineering type of constraints, some additional information from whatever we are calling FAI or the extension headers or whatnot. So those type of use cases could be categorized here. And then obviously how operators need to control and monitor their network, that could be a separate category. So this is how I was thinking about it. It's slightly different than what you posted on the wiki. So yeah, does this uh, make sense? It, it, it's a good start, I would say. Uh, um, well, I'm, you know, I'll leave uh, others to comment and maybe offline. We are over time now. Mm -hmm. minutes over time. But um, you know, make, make sure you add that uh, content to the wiki and uh, definitely I think we can uh, give it another read and give you feedback. Um, but any, any, anyone else has any feedback to Kiran on this now? Uh, yeah, quickly. I think this is good. It's getting closer to what, what I need to understand this, but I would actually like to see, uh, someone with an interest in the area, pick one of the use cases and try to work it through to make it like uh, 80% uh, finalized. So we see what we're actually looking for. 
and what the difference are between the different use cases. Okay, you're looking for volunteers. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm now sure. people have left already. I don't know. Uh, it was it's a bit late, but maybe we should ask on the list. Uh, the yeah, yeah, that's fine. But Kiran, you are willing to work with this, aren't you? Especially yeah, the so, like, yeah, definitely. So I can contribute a lot from here, but I wasn't expecting to do <laughs> most of the work here. It's I think we need experts in these areas to fill the yeah. stuff. Okay, so where do we have the experts? Oh, who are they? On the mailing list. <laughs> well. I you know, it says who. <laughs> okay, I think, yeah, we should uh, keep it open. We had a couple of volunteers on, on, on the use case, uh, the documentation wiki, at, the, at least the wiki. I can tell you who we had on the action item. Uh, Kiran was one of them for sure. Um, but uh, maybe you and me, more. but so. <laughs> no, there were more. There were more. Uh, I had, uh, let me see. Uh, we had uh, we had Huayu, we had Kiriti, Kiran, uh, Loa, Tarek, Stewart uh, are on uh, the hook. They are on the hook. The, well, I think most of those people like to say they are willing to help. Yeah. Yeah. So I would actually like to spearhead one of the use cases and see where it goes. Okay. Yeah, I have a. I have several uh, solid use cases um, uh, about how it will works in this scenario. And uh, yeah, as, as actually as note, I, I didn't see that included in the list, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I might in the future uh, meetings, I can talk about them. Well, and, how you, and, how you yeah, actually yeah. what you should do is actually add them to the wiki. Oh, okay. So, so you, you mean I, I can directly Add it to the wiki. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to do that. Yeah. Okay. And Kiran, same goes for you. You need the text we saw here. We want it in the wiki as quickly as possible. Yeah, I would do that, and I'll try to add more details for the uh, network slicing aspect that I have in mind. Okay. Great. Okay, I'll, I want to alert you that I'll I need to stop the recording now soon, uh, if I can get a okay from everyone. No, I think it's okay. Okay, then I'll stop the recording.